12.13 brought a big shift in the meta, from dragon-focused comps to AP-heavy comps. Today we're going over the top 4 comps that I think are going to do really well in this meta. Now we're talking about Anivia Jade. Despite the Shiyou nerfs, this comp is a strong meta contender for several reasons. Buffs to the Evoker trait allow Anivia to cast more often. The Soraka buff gives more survivability in the late game, and with the nerfs to attack damage carries across the board and the rise of AP comps, Jade is a great counter to the new meta with the use of the Mystic trait. With buffs to Namzi damage plus anti-heal on Fireball, increased damage on Cannoneer 3, 4, and 5, and the Ricochet buff, Corky Cannoneer is one of the premier comps this patch. Just be mindful, since Revel was slightly nerfed, you want to to lean more into Cannoneer than Revel in the early game. After the buffs in 12.12b, Astros plus Mages got even more buffs in 12.13. This comp got even more consistent in the early game with the Lilia buffs, and even with the slight rise nerf in the hotfix, this comp is still giga busted. Deja Mirage is a sleeper OP pick in the meta for two patches in a row. Shifting Deja's power from autos to spells means more team-wide damage. And again, with the rise of AP comps this patch, Deja fits in perfectly as an excellent pivot comp. Overall, it seems like the dev want to encourage going for higher tier traits and discourage level 2 to 3 splash traits with several adjustments across the board to put more power into higher end traits and take away some from the lower end ones. We'll see how effective the changes are. Personally, I don't think the power shift changes were enough to get players to change. If you really want to rank up fast and hit your rank goals, then sub to my channel so you don't miss out on the latest guides and meta updates. Now we're moving on to Anivia Jade. Here are the main units for this comp. Jade can be played through Karma or Anivia, but we'll be focusing on the Anivia build since Evokers just got buffed. For this comp, use Karma to hold early items. Shojin is needed and paired with Archangel Staff, Morello Namicon, or Death Cap. Anivia will pump out tons of damage. Your main tank will be Nico. If Anivia has Morello, you don't need Sunfire Cape. Instead, focus on getting Warmogs plus Gargoyle Stoneplate to make her a Giga Tank. With Shapeshifter 2, Nico can reach over 5,000 health. Extra items will go to Shioyu. She prefers AD items, but tank items are decent, and Nico can copy the tank stats from her for extra beefiness. You want to roll down at 7 for Anivia 3 star. You should be able to secure at least one Nico and one Shioyu. Lulu also works well in this comp for added Mystic, so pick her up as well. Here's an endgame board example. Notice the inclusion of Soraka and Bard, meaning this board doesn't cap out once you hit Anivia 3 and keeps scaling. This combined with Shioyu as a secondary carry means this comp is a powerhouse in the late game. Now we're moving on to Cannoneer. This comp relies heavily on solo tank Idus and Quirky damage. As such, Gargoyle Stoneplate is pivotal to your success here. Combined with Warmox, plus D-Claw or Bramble depending on enemy comp, makes your Idus unkillable. Do not worry about Sunfire Cape since Namzi now applies anti-heal with his fireball. Your starting goal should be to find trainer units ASAP to help scale Namzi fast and give damage items to Senna. Corky prefers Ginsu's plus Last Whisper. His third item can be any power item like Infinity Edge or Giant Slayer. If you get Draven's Axe, it's worth giving to Corky and maintaining high econ to max out the value. Here's what the final build might look like. You want to roll down at level 8 to find Corky 2, Idis 2, and Sona 2. Try to turn extra items into aura items to buff Corky. Here are the main core units for Astral Mages. The key thing to focus on is securing tier items. With the rise of AP comps, tiers may be highly contested. Loose streaking early is a viable strategy to secure items. Shojin is a must, and I like to combo that with Giant Slayer and Archangel Staff to cut through enemy tanks plus scaling damage, which synergizes well with rise long wait time between casts. You want to roll on 7 for your units. The main units to look for are Rise, Alawi, Silas, and Nami. You may not have the Econ to 3 star all of them, so choose wisely. Rise is who matters most. Once you hit, you can sell Vlad for another mage. I usually go with Heimer since he has a stun, but Lilia may be a better option now. Here's what the final build could look like. Extra damage items should go to Zoe, and if you don't hit Rise 3 star, you can transfer the main items to Zoe instead. For tank items, Declaw or Bramble depending on enemy boards, as well as Sunfire, Warmog, and stone plate for great utility. These should go on Silas or Alawi, whichever you 3 star. Moving on to our next comp, and making it back onto the list is Deja Mirage. Shifting his power from the autos to the spell means big team-wide damage, and with the Dawnbringer trait nerfs, it may be worth playing around Jeweled Gauntlet plus Executioner's Edge or other similar combos. Keep in mind Dawnbringers is still a viable trait. Here are the main units for this comp. If you saw my last meta update, then you know I love running Cavalier Frontline in this comp. Vertically, it's easy to fit in and gets in tons of stats. For Deja, securing Ginsu's is a must, and you can flex the other items, since more power is shifted to the spell cast. I recommend Archangel Staff, Deathblade, Jeweled Gauntlet, or Gunblade. This will net you big team damage and great healing. You should look to roll down at level 8 for Deja 2 and Nunu 2. If you find a lot of Nunus, then going for Nunu 3 is a powerful ticket to first place. 
here's what the endgame board might look like. You can sub out Mirage 6 for extra guild units like Bard, Rise, or Twitch for bonus stats. Against assassin comps, remember to place non-cavalier units in the back. This will relieve pressure from Deja as the cavalier units will rush forward and ignore them. This board is very powerful late game as long as you can protect Deja. Do you have a comp you'd like me to cover? Tell me in the comments and I might make a complete guide video for it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned till next time.